What what did you do before band or shoulder? Right before banter or through, me, through the build-up? Tell me the build-up. Uh, I finished school. Um, once I finished school, I then tried an online college course, if you want to, if you want to call it. Um, Re, the, the, uh, my partner now, she used to do all of my assignments and stuff because I just sucked at studying. I just, I don't know, I couldn't focus. I really struggled to focus in school, uh, especially uh, college as well. Um, I, I was sort of this kid roaring of energy coming out of school and being like, I want to go attack the world. And like, no, you still got more books. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm tired of books, bro. I just did, I just did 12 years of books. Like, I don't want to do any more books. So I tried that. I failed that. Uh, two months, I wasted my mother's money. Sorry, mom. Um, but I'm taking you for your first no Christmas this year, so I made it up. Um, and then my dad called me and he said he's got a little job from me, uh, from his friend, and they're going to start this little business where I'm going to basically be the, the truck driver, where I'm going to drive around these little steel containers. Uh, they'll get sandblasted, you'll take the paint off. It's basically the, the toilet holders that go in all of your. Uh, your malls and stuff like the bathrooms you know those things that hold the toilet paper <laughs> yeah those things that was my first job was to basically take all the old ones and to get them refurbed so basically get them sandblasted take the paint off then repaint them rebrand them and then send them back to the company um, but we didn't have any of the machines to do that we didn't anything so we went to the company we're like we can do it <laughs> but we had no idea how we were going to do it. So they gave us the contract and we got the contract and we basically took the, uh, we found a guy that does sandblasting. We found a lady that does powder coating, which is the paint. Um, and we basically just had a little fruit van. It was actually bad because it was like a 1980 old low bed um, van. And we put these big wood, wooden, like, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, like wooden, wooden um, sheets on them. So I actually looked like a Mexican like fruit driver. Like it was, this, it was so bad, bro, because it was, it was tied up with uh, like a steel uh, wire. So it was literally like when I was when I was driving, like this thing was doing it. It was like a uh, a makeshift sort of plan. So um, I would drive this thing. I'd basically go fetch them from the factory. I'd then take them to the sandblaster. He would put them in the fire. Would make this big ass fire would burn them and then we'll take them through to the, the, the powder coaters, get them powder coated um, and then basically deliver the product. But, you know, we went to these, these guys separately and we told them about, like, you know, we never had the opportunity of having the machines or having the money to build these sort of things. So, you know, we did, we hustled, we hustled all the time. So when we told that company we could do it, like we couldn't do it. <laughs> but we knew if we got it, we'd find a way to do it. Um, so we found, these guys, they didn't know that we had the contracts. I will tell them, we'll pay you this much for this, pay you this much for this. Um, but we were actually making 200% per unit. That uh, was our profit of the time of doing it. So we did it for about two, three months. I was earning about 2000 maybe $3,000 as a 19 year old, driving my little fruit van every day with like three guys and they would offload and do things. So it went pretty well. Um, and then the, the powder coater met the sandblaster somehow and met the company somehow and uh, overnight <laughs> we lost the whole contract um, you know and uh, yeah it went pretty well so that was it was cool I didn't know any money management then so I was just spending money as I was making it um, so when we lost it it was devastating for me I was like oh really um, and then from that my dad's friend had a little woodworking right money management perfect um, Explain money management, man. How do you how do you do that? What what did you not know that then, and what do you know now about it? What did you do that was wrong, and what do you do now that's right? Um. So, like, we've always had soft hearts, and we just give a shit about people. Like, we, you know, when, when you don't have money, you don't have those things. Like, we just care about the drinks on the Friday nights, or we just care about like doing things together. So, at that time, as soon as we made a little bit of money. We would just spoil people. It was just that thing, like guys, tonight's on me, you know. So, so the money management then wasn't that we didn't know money management, but anything that we received more than what we knew, we would just blow it and actually put it on our friends and family. Like, and I think we still have it in our genes today. 
we'll make it now, we're just going and and then blim. My brother's a perfect example of it. Um, he made some money in December and he just went wild. Just went wild. You get a present, 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 you know what I mean? It's that thing. Um, so that's sort of how it was. So the money management was, wasn't that we were, were stupid with money, it was more like, we got this now, let's like spoil, let's spend time. Or like, so we always used it on spending time with each other. I think that's what's always kept the, the big thing. The difference that I, I obviously realize now is that it doesn't last long. Like if you don't have some sort of structure with money and some sort of plan with money, um, you know, you lose it very quickly and it sucked. Like I, I lost it three times. I had that feeling of like that freedom, um, but I never actually looked after it. So I lost it three times. So this time uh, I do it a bit differently where I do still do that exact thing of uh, creating opportunities. Like our business that we have right now is my friends and family. Like every single person here has a friend or family member, like it's, it's, it's incredible. But I also learned how to build a proper business model behind it. And if it really made sense, you know what I mean, that this thing would also be good financially, I'd do it. So everything that I do has a strategy behind it, it's got a filtering system and it's got a really good financial background behind it that actually, so I can continue to do it. I like it. I like having the choice to spoil my friends. I love having the choice to take my family where it is like, and to give them that sort of feeling, but it does not last long if you don't know what the hell you're doing. So I learned that game by watching, <clears throat> by watching a successful man do it in front of me, watch a man build a business. When I started to realize that, holy shit, like this is all it takes to build a business, like really? Um, now let me incorporate this with who I am. Uh, and that's, I think, what we're doing right now. Like it's that beautiful flow of like, we have fun, we got beautiful people around us, and we're making money. Like that's the, that, that's the cool part. So I think the soft heart is the problem to money management. That was a problem for me then. There's nothing wrong with a soft heart. Like you'd be very grateful for that, that you have that, but it wasn't, uh, um, it doesn't make you more money. And uh, as, soon as, as soon as you can learn to balance the two, uh, when to be a little bit ruthless and hard and when to be loving and, and caring and, and make sure it all balances, you know, then you win, the, you, you win the ultimate goal. You don't lose yourself in the process. Very important. I've made money in the last few years, but I haven't lost childhood. And then I can sit here and be very proud. Okay, beautiful. Amazing. Just to that. Just to that. Now. <laughs> Thank you, bro. What would you tell me now? I am I am a person that does not have a lot of money now, that is going to have a lot of money later. What am I missing? What what do I need to know about receiving money and managing it? Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. Mm. What do I need to know? I literally am asking you like I don't know. So you know, the biggest question is like everyone asks like, when am I going to be rich and these sort of things. Um, and then the money comes, you're not ready for it. And that's, that's a very simple, simple reason for it. Um, the biggest thing you've got to do now is wake up every morning and you are rich. You've got every single cent in the world. Who is, who are you? What are you doing with your life? Like, what are you enjoying? Like, you know, because the problem is money comes and the reason why you just lose it and lose it is because you never prep for the day you're going to have it. You always ask the question, when? And then when it comes, you have no idea what to do. You don't even know who you are. You don't even know what you even wanted with your life and these sort of things. So what I did when I didn't have money was I already visioned and I already knew my head. Like I woke up every morning, I'm a millionaire. Like I'm the richest man in the world. I'm the smartest man in the world. Like every day that was just me, like in that way. And as soon as I said that print, it started being like, Sheldon, when this comes your way, like you know it's coming at any moment. You're ready for it. Your head's there already. You know you are that person. But when it comes, what the hell are you going to do? And I started, that was when I got that, that little bit of uh, addiction to learning and studying rich people. Because I just studied these guys, I studied these guys. And like, the problem is with these guys is they made the money and then they just never stopped making the money and they just never got out of the office. And I was like, holy shit, like these guys sacrificed, they made the money, but they got very shitty family lives. They got very shitty balance. They look as unhappy as could be. And I was like, let me study these guys, take the best, the pros and cons from each one. And let me build the ultimate version of who I am. So for someone like you saying you don't have the money now, but you know it's coming in that sort of sense, is to make sure that when that money comes, bro, like it's going to try every single thing that it can to change you. It's going to try to change every single part of who you are. Like you got to know that. It comes with a sort of way, but if you don't know that, so like for you, it's the preparation of that, of knowing that you already have, you're already rich now. So who are you now? And if you can really get it in your head that you're really rich now, when the money comes, there's no difference. 
the problem is when the money just comes and you don't know, like it just changes you and it just like brings this whole different flow. It brings fake people, it brings this, like you start losing the real people, you start bringing the fake people, it starts. You got no more saying no. I want this alcohol bottle, I go buy it, I drink it. I want the best weed, I go smoke it. I want to go like anything, like I do it. And that's the big issue. So rather, rather um, keep prep the preparation of that you are that right now. So when it comes, you can still remain you. Like I would rather go broke as shit and go do what I would do if I lost myself in this process. And it's tried, it's tried many times. It's, it's a, money means absolutely zero. My favorite thing about money is choice. Like that's my, my, my biggest thing about, uh, about that. So be proud because you're already rich. You're rich that you're with yourself right now. You're rich that you go, go get to, go get to um, you know, you get to be you right now without the money and you get to, to uh, truly, truly understand what that is. Because when the money comes, it tries to break that. It tries to take every, all of that away from you. Um, and it tries to, to, to uh, f make the cracks deeper. Uh, and it's not worth it. It's not worth, worth a single bit of time. Cool. Wow. Holy shit. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. Mm. Now we're talking. Mm. Mm. Okay. Mm. Money. Money is the most interesting subject I find on earth. Because not only what it does to people, but the myth behind it. Tell me, I want to know what you've learned about money. What is it, man? What is this thing? What is it to you? And what is it to other people? And what advice would you give to anybody that's struggling for it? Mm. Mm. Make sense? Um, yeah, it, uh, it does make sense. So, money to what I thought it was then, to what it is now, is complete, completely opposite. Like, <clears throat> it's not the same at all. Like then it was like, oh, I get to like do all these things and like, you know, enjoy life to a sense. But money just brings so much problems as well and just so many issues. Like you think you've got problems now, wait till you have money. Like it's a, it's, it's a whole nother game because you get so, especially if you didn't have it before. You didn't have any money before and now you make it. You, go, you, you get so protective over it and it's bad. It's really bad because you get so obsessed of money and losing it. Like this has been my big problem this year. Well, the, the last two years is I just never stopped and I just took on so much all the time because of the of me being afraid that I'm gonna lose it again. And I lost it three times then. Now I'm on like 20 or 100 times more than what I've ever had in my life, but I still fear it every single day that I'm gonna lose it all, and I'm gonna lose it all, and I'm gonna lose it all. And it like puts you in that mindset. So for those who chase it, like it's cool in the beginning when it comes your way, like it's great, but you know, a human, like a, Humans really pushed when they when they have that vision or something. The sad thing is when you get money, it's, it doesn't match the vision. So like you sort of let down when it gets there. And humans are very powerful when they're continuously looking up at things. Um, you drive in a Lamborghini, it's amazing, like it's really cool. Two days later, it's a normal car. You, you, you drive in a Rolls Royce, you do any any of these things, you get the best things in this world, even the best steaks. Like I like a ten dollar steak. I've eaten the, the, the hundred dollar steaks. I still like the ten dollar steak. You know what I mean? Like it's cool for, too cool to try it and it's cool to, to have these things. But uh, yeah, so basically it's, it's great for you to, to pick yourself up and to like have that motivation to get there and these sort of things. Um, but not much changes <clears throat> when you get there except choice. Except choice. Now you have a choice to do things. Uh, I've enjoyed traveling the world. I've enjoyed seeing different cultures. I've enjoyed meeting all different people. Um, so that might be my favorite part about the money. So, you know, do me the biggest favor, I'll say it again, start planning for when you're gonna make money. Are you ready for when money comes your way? Are you gonna remain you? Are you gonna stay here? Uh, you only get money when you are ready for money. It's very simple and it's not worth getting the money and completely doing, destroying yourself. So, you know, put it in your head, you're already rich. If you wake up, wake up every morning, pretend you got a million dollars. I know it sounds stupid, but it is. Because the day you set that in and you can still be yourself with money, when you get the real sense of money, at least you don't lose yourself in the process. Um, yeah. Okay. Beautiful. You, you touched motivation, right? 
Motivation is a very multifaceted subject. Because there's a lot to say, there's a lot of people doing all sorts of things to be motivated. Let's start with a simple question. What, what motivated you a few years ago? And what motivates you now? You. <clears throat> um, a few years ago, I was just in that same mentality of like, we need money. Like, you know, we, we need to finally make this breakthrough. Um, we saw our parents like not ever get to do what they want. So it was sad that my dad left in that time and he didn't get to, to really explore and do, do what he's always wanted. So I think for me and my brother and everything we've done, like it was more, uh, let's make lots of money. Let's, let's be able to get our parents out. Let's finally get like, our family deserves better. You know what I mean? Like I, I watched my, my grand die in a home. That was a, a very, you know, I think it costs 2,000 rand. So what's that? Um, $130 a month to put it in there. That's what we could afford. Um, but because they didn't like give her the full care, you know, you get what you pay for in this world. I think that's a, that's a big thing on why we, we, we get attached to money so much. Uh, but to see her die in a home and not have that, that, that full um, love and like, the fact that we're so stuck in the system that I'm working from six in the morning until six at night and I couldn't even, you know, I'm so exhausted when I get home, I couldn't even have a little bit of time to even go visit her and go see her as often as I would like. Um, I think we were tired of that. I think we were tired of like just busting our asses every day for, you know, I worked for a hundred and, it's about $150 a month for a year. Like that was my, my full time, full, full salary for a year. So you'd work your ass off and you'd work 12 hour days and stuff and you're still losing people around you and still nothing is working and like everyone's depressed and like everyone's happy. So, <clears throat> so for me it was that, um, that sense of like, I need to, I need to, I need to crack this family because our family's been doing this for a long time. And the problem is with our family is they also got a little bit of addictive personality. So they would get stuck into this rut of working hard and then they would numb themselves every night and they would just do it for the sake of doing it. So either through alcohol or through anything like that. So they would just like literally numb themselves and then just work hard every day. And I was just tired of it. I'm like, we are so much more. Like we are so much more than this shit. Staying in one place, not seeing anything. Um, so that was my motivation to get, get everyone out. Like I said it to the day, like I'm going to change everything. I'm going to change, I'm going to crack it all. Me and Dean are going to take over the whole world. Like we're going to change everything and we're going to break out of everything. Uh, our family does not deserve it. And by us doing it, other people are going to see it. And it starts this chain and it is four or five years later. And we've done exactly that. We have half our family out of that city. Now we have them all working under us in this business um, and all started to move. So, um, so find something that's really pure. Like if I didn't know the true reason of what I was doing it for, like people do it for money. Like, I just want to be rich so I can do this stuff. Bullshit. Like, I did it to save my family. Like, I did it to save my friends. I did it to do the thing. That's why I did it. Um, what motivates me now? Uh, it has been a, a quite tough question because uh, I didn't know at some points this year. Because now the money came. It's like, remember you have that reality to when it's here. And then you're just as sad as what you were when you, when you didn't have the money. But you're sad in different ways. Um, <clears throat> so what motivates me now is the... I still don't have every single one of my friends and family financially free so that is still I love that motivation part of it like if I can say in my life that I managed to give every single person in my life a shot and they managed to, to do something if they take the steps or not it's their choice but to give them all like I'd be really proud as an 80 year old man sitting back and be like holy shit like I gave them all a shot and some of them shine and some of them did a magical things um, so that's still a big motivation now like I still have my little brother they they still stuck the outside um, I need him here. I need to, you know, who, who, who's watching his soccer games? Who's, uh, who's at his, uh, you know, like who's supporting him and helping him through these things. So I got to get him the side so that I can, I can do that through my time and just be there. He's got no dad anymore. So it's, it's important. So that motivates me. My friends are still, a lot of them are still struggling with mental health and finances and these things. Um, so that motivates me. And, um, to be honest, my community motivates me. You know, when I started this and I got into it, I didn't know that 90% of the world feel the same. I didn't know that. Like, uh, you know, we, we, we sort of sit in our heads like we feel like this and like, you know, I feel like this. And then uh, you, you, you find out that 90% of the planet feels the same. Um, so when I started to see that there's real people behind the cameras and there's real people and like to see what they have been through and what they've accomplished and like how they can relate in different ways. 
um, is absolutely incredible. Like I can't believe it. And, and to see what people like how they've grown and stuff. So that's been a huge motivation. It's probably the big reason why I'm still doing what I'm doing right now. Um, end of the day, I did this to spend to, to be with my friends and family. I'm at that point where I can. I can go full time and be with my friends and family. I'm financially free in that sense, and I have a skill that I can continue to be financially free. Like I'm able to look after myself. Um, but by seeing the community and seeing the people's stories and seeing the, the, the trueness of what this world is, like that, that still keeps me going right now. So I use that as my motivation right now. Um, and um, and yeah, I feel like we got a lot more beauty. I feel like this was just the start. I feel the day that I could start talking and I could start being myself, people loved it more. And I was like, what? Like, all I got to do is be me. And like, as I'm learning and stuff. So it motivates me that it's so simple. I think uh, it looks difficult, but the fact that it's so simple, it motivates me. I'm like, holy shit, I can achieve a lot in this lifetime. Like, I can achieve a lot by just being myself and passing the levels and just keep sharing as we go. Uh, so I'm extremely motivated. The problem is the world, uh, this business world, like try to shake everything and like remove Sheldon and take Sheldon completely out. Um, so um, my motivation is to remain Sheldon, to continue this and continue what makes me happy. And uh, that's my motivation every single day. And my daughter, my daughter, my lady, my family, like these are the things that uh, they're here. I get to see them. I'm in my brother's apartment right now. Uh, he's here. He took the step. I was very afraid that he was going to stay in the place that I was. And uh, he took the fucking step. And it can bring me to tears right now because it makes me extremely, extremely, extremely proud. Okay. Mm. Beautiful. You, you know what, before we continue, what would you say to a person right now that is feeling demotivated? A lot of people, COVID just ended. They're not doing shit. They don't Can I have two minutes? Two minutes? Yeah. Okay. Two minutes and then I'll continue. Yeah.